Well, it's great to be here at this beautiful site, and I want to welcome my colleagues in government. We have, of course, Mayor Spano and Chuck Lesnick, uh, President of the City Council. We have Michael Sabatino, newly elected to the City Council. Chris Johnson, this is his district. We have da uh, Daniel McKay from the Preservation League. Where are you, Daniel? Daniel, come here. Hi, thank you. You don't have to come up if you don't want. We have my good friend Mike Oates from Hudson Valley Economic Development right there. Uh, we have our developer, Layla Golden. Last but not least, our newly elected assembly member, Shelley Mayer, right here. Am I leaving anyone out? Good. All right. So I want to thank all of those folks for being here. And what are we here to do? We're talking today about the urgent need of the federal government to bring new jobs, new housing, new business projects to this great city of Yonkers while at the same time reviving many of the historic structures in Yonkers that have collected cobwebs for too long. In New York State, we are blessed with many beautiful buildings that should not just be torn down and you put up, you know, the kind of thing you see in Scottsboro or Hialeah or somewhere like that. And the federal government, in its wisdom, has created programs that allow you to take these beautiful buildings keep their old beauty that is never replaceable, but turn them into economic powerhouses that create jobs. And with everything happening as we've seen here in Yonkers, we know that this can happen. All you have to look is at the daylighted Sawmill River project, now known as Vanderdonk Park, right across from the train station, just finished in 2012, or the Ridge Shopping Center, which opened in 2011, and you know that we can turn this area around while keeping the old beauty, the old irreplaceable charm and construction. And so that's why I'm here today, because there's much more work to be done. Luckily, the Glenwood Power Plant that we just toured could be a linchpin of the success of this waterfront in the entire city of Yonkers. Once completed, this neglected landmark could become home to a vibrant new hotel, restaurant, cafe bar, parkland, and cultural icons that will bolster the entire community. And with federal government help, this could all be jump-started at the end of this year. There are two tax credits that are key. And the linchpin is called the New Market Tax Credit. I'm proud to say that I pushed very hard not to let this tax credit expire, but get it renewed. And in the recently passed fiscal cliff negotiations, the new market tax credit was extended. We're also trying to enlarge the historic tax credit. And you put those two things together, and buildings like this take off economically. Instead of becoming abandoned old hulks, they become beautiful, beautiful, um, structures that attract hotels and businesses and apartments that people want to be here because this isn't just your ordinary little cinder block place. This is an amazing place as you can see just by the structure. The Glenwood Power Plant was constructed about 110 years ago as part of the New York Central Railroad's initial push to replace steam engines with electrified rail lines. It served this capacity for 30 years and then the New York Central sold it to Con Ed in 36 when it became more cost effective for the company to purchase electricity rather than manufacture it. Under the new management, Glenwood functioned for another 30 years as a generator powering the community around here. But it was shut 45 years ago when Con Edison implemented new technologies that rendered Glenwood's old technologies obsolete. Since then, the building collected cobwebs. Despite initial plans to demolish the building in the years that followed, the Preservation League of New York saw the beauty of this building. And Leela mentioned this. If you go to the old Tate Gallery, the, the, the new Tate Gallery in London, it looks just like this. And it brought back all of the southern part of London south of the Thames River. And people came not just for the art in the building, but for the structure that contained the art. The same thing could happen here in Yonkers. <clears throat> anyway, the League saw that. And um, they selected it as one of the seven to save properties in 2008. 
after its closure, the building was so run down and so blighted, it was called the Gangs of Hell, sorry, it was called the Gates of Hell by local residents. It was used by gangs for criminal activity, gang initiation and beatings. I guess they also spent some time on graffiti. And Lord knows what happened to the people up there if they were high on drugs or booze or something else. Who knows, right? In any case, um, after a subsequent study confirmed that much of the building could be reused and its iconic smokestacks could be kept intact, the Yonkers community rallied around the $200, 000, $200 million construction project intended to transform the building, revitalize the waterfront, and give a gigantic economic push to the Yonkers area. The approximately 250,000 square feet will serve as a multifaceted catalyst for economic growth. 1,800 construction jobs, 900 to 1,000 permanent jobs in numerous sectors, hospitality, retail service, and management. It's financed via a public-private debt that's very innovative, with an equity model, and the $200 million project is projected to open in the spring of 2016 and will become, as I said, an iconic destination. People not just from nearby will come, they'll come from far and wide uh, if the developers are able to complete their plans. Once completed, the historic Bellament will be home to world-class restaurants. You can imagine some of the great chefs of the world, given the views of the Hudson and New York City in this building, would want to be here, and they will come. Five-star hotel rooms, the same. Bars, cafes, parks, and a unique conference and exhibition center. It's our hope that the iconic destination will attract world-class cultural programs, exhibits, and forums right here in Yonkers. And as many developers will tell you, including Leela Gorin, the key to financing these projects is access to federal tax credits. That's why I pushed so hard to get this new market credit passed. And it is. It's now law. And that's why I'm going to work so hard to see that the federal historic tax credit is expanded. Though the New York market tax credit was on the it was on the chopping block during the fiscal cliff deal, they said this is something we can get rid of. But we fought for it at the eleventh hour. I was able to preserve it. But the job's not over yet. We want some of those new market tax credits to be allocated to the National Development Council, which will then allocate over twenty million dollars of them to this project. So today I'm calling on Treasury to start allocating the new market tax credits and give some to the Development Council. Now, there are lots of other projects in New York State that want these new market tax credits, and I'll be pushing for some of them, too. But this one is a very high priority. The federal tax credits are allocated, as I said, to banks and other organizations like the National Development Council. National Development Council has said, though, if they get their share, they're going to help fund this project. Okay, um, the tax credit, here's what it does. It allows developers to recoup 39% of the cost of an investment if it's made in an urban downtown community. So if an investor wants to spend a million dollars to renovate a historic building, the investor recovers 390000 over the seven-year period. That's a great incentive. Developers like it. And we preserve buildings like this, which are part of our history. And again, that's why I love living in New York. I don't want to live in the suburbs of Florida or the suburbs of Arizona where there's one development, another development, another development. They look exactly the same. They have nothing, or as we say in Brooklyn, nothing like this. And so that's why I'm so glad uh, to push this. The federal program provides key financing. It's made projects. This is made, New Market has made projects across New York State available. And now I want Yonkers to get its fair share. Here's the bang for the buck, the private public partnership that this is. For every dollar of the credit, you get $12 in private investment generated. That's quite a rate of return that whether you're a government or not, you'd love. The plan's simple. The developers are working, as I said, towards a $20 million credit allocation, which would free many, many millions more in financing. 
for the project. The transformative project, I've studied these, I care about stuff like this, I love economic development, as you know, and this one has all the makings of success. So, we're doing that. I'm also urging support for the developer's application to the National Hip Park Service Historic Credit, and that could provide a 20% credit to the project's investors. Layla and her partners are applying this maximum credit eligibility this week, and I will push the NPS to do just that. Both of these realized could actually, if they are allocated in the next several months, could allow shovels in the ground before the end of 2013 right here. 1,800 good paying construction jobs for the community. So, let's be clear, the tax credit's not the only piece of the puzzle. It can't guarantee the success of the project. There's a lot on the private side that has to go right but it'll be the glue that makes it happen. So with that, I pledge my commitment to get these credits allocated so that this project can go forward, and uh, we'll turn it over to Mayor Spano, wherever he is. There it is. Good. Thank you, Senator. It's cold, so I'll try to keep it. I know the Senator doesn't have an overcoat on, but, uh, but they say they're tough in Washington. So, uh, but let me just say to Layla, to Ron, uh, to, to Senator, thank you for being here. You used the word iconic many times, and it's true. This building is iconic. It's iconic it's uh, for a lot of reasons. Some of it's negative, uh, but you know what? Some of it isn't negative. Some of it just represents uh, what Yonkers was uh, to the past, what Yonkers could be. It rep it's representative of, of the people who, you know, run up and down the Hudson River, and they look at this building and go, yeah. there's Yonkers. Yeah. So, uh, so not only is it iconic, but this project is transformative. It's transformative to our community. This will transform the Yonkers waterfront into a true destination, not just a regional destination, but a world-class destination, which is what Yonkers deserves. You so I want to thank you for your support, Senator. You it's a it. great, it's a thank great you, honor to have you here in our city. Great. Thank and you. Uh, I was going to say thank great. you.